Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at greatest common factor, the greatest common factor of two numbers. So, some things that you can expect to see, we're going to talk about factors today. We're going to talk about common factors, and then we're going to talk about greatest common factor. So let's start it off with factors. A factor, these are numbers that you multiply together to give you the original number. Now that kind of sounds vague, so let me show you an example. 2 times 5 is 10. So 2 and 5 are factors of 10. They multiply together to give you 10. Seriously, that's it. So let's talk about some factors. Show me some factors of 72. Can you think of any factors of 72? Numbers that multiply together to give you 72. 2 times 36, 1 times 72, 3 times 24, 4 times 18, 6 times 12, 8 times 9. These are all the numbers in red are factors of 72. Okay, 72 has a lot of different factors. So those are just some of the factors of 72. Let's do a quick practice with factors. I want you to identify the factors of 36. There's a couple of factors of 36 up there on the board. The numbers on the board are all going to be one of two things. They're either going to be factors or multiples. These numbers in red are the factors of 36. Some of the factors of 36, not all of them, but the other numbers are multiples of 36. And we talked about that in a previous lesson. When you multiply 36 times something, you'll get these numbers. So this is one of the most common mistakes when talking about greatest common factor and that is that people often mix it up with multiples. So this was just one slide to kind of show the difference. Factors of a number are going to be equal to or less than that number. You can see that with all the examples here. All right, now I want to show you a trick real quick on how to make sure that you get all of the factors. You don't miss any factors. The, the key here is to list them in pairs. Remember, the number will be multiplied times something to get the factor. So let's look at 24. I'm going to list factor pairs. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And as I come into the middle, it's kind of like a rainbow almost. Like as I come into the middle, you'll notice between 4 and 6, there aren't any more. All right, so I just went 1, 2, 3, 4, and the numbers that are multiplied times those to get me my 24. So this is a way that we can find all of the factors, is to list them in pairs. And sometimes um, I've seen this like rainbow type pattern used to show those factor pairs. So now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about common factors. Common factors are when two numbers have the same factor. That's it. Ready to see it in action? Oh, hold on. There is one exception to this. One doesn't count. One is a factor of everything, so it would be a common factor of every single number. So we're going to discount one and move on from there. So other than one, common factors are pretty much when two numbers have a common factor or a factor that is the same between the two. Let me show you an example. With the numbers 16 and 12, this is how I would find common factors. First, I would list all of the factors. So 16 has the factors of 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. And again, you can see those um, if you were to do like a rainbow pattern, 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. All right? 12 has the factors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And again, you can do that rainbow pattern if you'd like to see what all the common factors are. Now I'm going to identify which factors are common. 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, and 4. These are all of your common factors. Now, as I said before, 1 is going to be a common factor for everything. So from now on, I'm not going to identify 1 as a common factor. And in fact, I'm going to take the box off of that. All right? So, because it's really not very helpful. So that's pretty much it. That's how you find common factors. You list the factors and pick out which ones are common. Now let's talk about the most helpful f common factor. That's what we call the greatest common factor. We've got two numbers here, 20 and 24. We're going to do the same process. We're going to list the factors of both numbers. 
Okay, and listing them the way I do them this quickly is because I've prepared them, but also because I know my multiplication tables really well. This step might take the most amount of time, and that's okay. Um, and just to reiterate, every pair of numbers is going to have a common factor of 1. It's the least helpful common factor, so we're not even going to worry about that. We're just going to identify the greatest common factor in this case. So we know they have 2 in common, they have 4 in common, and looking through, that's it. So 1, 2, and 4 are the common factors. 4 is your greatest common factor, and that is the number that's going to be the most helpful when we're moving forward. So when you're identifying greatest common factor, we don't have to look at every one from now on. We can just look at the one that's the greatest. All right? So I'll set up a question for you. I want you to find the greatest common factor. Here are two numbers, 14 and 25. Go ahead and identify the greatest common factor. You can pause the recording and go ahead and try that one on your own. All right, that one was a little bit of a trick question. We're going to do the same steps, listing the factors. But when you list the factors in this case, there are no common factors. Which factors are common? None. There are no common factors. So we can't really find a greatest common factor following those same steps. And that's it. If there is no common factor other than one, we call these numbers relative primes or relatively prime to each other. All right, the numbers are not prime. Both of those numbers are composite numbers, but compared to each other, they are prime. They, do, they don't have any common factor other than one. So that's a situation that you might come across. So just keep that in mind. If there are no common factors other than one, we call them relatively prime or relative primes. All right, here's one that you actually can answer. Go ahead and pause the recording. Find the greatest common factor between those two numbers. All right, you might wonder why I'm using 12 so much. 12 has a lot of factors, so it's really nice. All right, let's take a look. We're going to list those factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, and then 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Those are our factors. Try and find which factors are common. In this case, 2, 3, and 6 are all common between them. And then find the greatest common factor, the largest number that is a common factor between both lists there. And in this case, it is 6. All right, that's it. Let's do one more question with finding the greatest common factor. Go ahead and pause the recording. See if you can do this one on your own. Find the greatest common factor between 36 and 72. Were you able to follow the steps? Listing the factors. This one might have taken a long time because there's a lot of factors. <laughs> All right, Lots of factors with 36 and 72. Then we say which factors are common. This took a long time to draw this many boxes, let me tell you. All right, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36 are all common factors. And our greatest common factor, the largest number that's common between them, is 36. This will happen from time to time if one of the numbers is a factor of the other numbers, that that number, 36, is the greatest common factor. It's kind of nice when it happens. Um, it's kind of rare to happen, but it does definitely help. Um, in cases when we actually use greatest common factors, and we'll see that kind of in our future. But that was our last question with finding the greatest common factor. That is it. So quick recap on what we learned. We learned how to list factors, we learned how to identify common factors, and then find the greatest common factor. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.